Welcome to this study on how to color coat your Bible for apologetic action in the field and your own personal theological study. Now if you're a good Bible student you're going to have more than one Bible translation and this is easier than ever with access to the internet. You can go to you know different sites that have several translations of the Bible right there at your disposal. So if you want to be a good Bible student, you want several translations of the Bible. However, if you're anything like me, you have that one Bible that's kind of extra special to you. The one Bible that kind of has your brain in it. The one Bible that you use for study. The one Bible that you take to church with you. And the Bible that you use when you're talking to Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons. Or, um, you know, you might not be talking to cultics, but you might be talking to, you know, your friends who may be Christians, but who may not be reformed. And so you have that Bible in which you kind of have your brain in. And you may not know exactly the chapter and verse, but you might not know where it is on the page. You know, you might look, okay, well, it's in the back, and it's somewhere down here, you know, on the right down here. And I'm looking at it. There it is. It's underlined right there. You have your Bible that you have your brain in. And what I've done over the years is I've kind of developed a system in which I've learned to color coat my Bible for certain theological and apologetic topics uh, that help me find things rather quickly when I'm dealing with different issues. You know, for instance, like I said, Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons, or even just dealing with somebody who may be a Christian but may be, you know, dispensational or something like that. So I have those things underlined a particular way. And it's just something that I've developed over the years, and I've shared it with people over the years, and people have seemed to benefit uh, for that, uh, benefit from that. And so I want to pass this along. Now I made a video about this some time back. It's not up anymore. <coughs> and so I wanted to do this new video. Excuse me. And and part of the reason I wanted to do this new video was to replace that one. And also I've also made some further developments in my own. Uh, color coding system and I wanted to pass those further developments on to you uh, as well. So without further ado we're going to get into the different colors what you'll need we're going to get into what they mean and we're also going to get into the development of it. I'll share a little autobiographical history of how these things developed. So here's what you're going to need. You're going to need either your choice of pens or highlighters. Now, honestly, I suggest both, but I've recently kind of switched over to pens rather than highlighters. Uh, and the simple fact that I've switched over to pens rather than highlighters is that highlighters bleed through the page and pens tend to not. But there have been certain cases in which a highlighter has come in handy, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a green pen a blue pen, a pink pen, a purple pen, I should put these down here, a purple pen, an orange pen, and a black pen. Okay, those are the things that you're going to need. <coughs> Excuse me. And also, if you want to get highlighters that correspond, you know, an orange highlighter, a green highlighter, uh, a blue highlighter, a pink highlighter, etc. If you want to get those, uh, those are recommended as well because there are certain times where a highlighter does well, does better in certain situations than something else. Then, so, oh, the other thing I forgot to mention was an or a, a, a yellow one. A yellow one. I almost forgot about yellow there. You're going to need a yellow one. This one's very important. So, all right, well, let's get started. Well, how we're going to get started is I'm going to introduce each one of these to you, and I'm going to tell you what they mean and what they stand for, and perhaps give you some examples, and I'm going to tell you how they developed. So I'm going to start with the first one that, that uh, I kind of developed, that kind of became a standard for me, and we're just going to go through them that way, just kind of how I developed it. Um, first of all, when I first got back into being a Christian, I was away from Christianity for years in my teenage years, and then God called me back to himself and put it on my heart to recommit my life when I was about 19 years old. And I just started reading the Bible, and I had a King James Bible, and I just underlined anything in any color. Uh, actually, I had a friend who... I saw that he was underlining stuff in a highlighter, and I thought, that's cool. I didn't know what he was doing, but I was like, man, that's cool. 
I, I want to highlight things in my Bible. I want my Bible to be as raggedy and all, you know, lined up just as much as his is. And so I would just read the Bible and I just go, oh, man, I, I, uh, I like that verse. I'm just going to underline it. I'm going to underline that verse. Well, when I was being called back to Christ... I was still kind of, it didn't all happen at once. I didn't just all of a sudden repent of every sin that I had committed, completely got out of the lifestyle I was living. The first thing that started happening was I started going back to church and going back to Bible studies. Now at the same time, I was living with the woman who would later become my wife, and she was LDS. She, she's not LDS anymore, she's now Christian, but she was uh, LDS. And we used to get into these theological arguments because even though I wasn't living like a Christian, I understood Christianity and I understood Mormonism and I understood why I wasn't a Mormon and I knew what the problems were in Mormon theology and by golly, I wasn't going to show her through lifestyle, but I was going to show her through the Bible. So one of the things that I did was I picked up an orange highlighter and I, this is a pen, and I don't know if the color is really coming through here. Maybe this is a little bit better. Okay, this is orange. I don't know if the color is really coming through, but orange. And I started underlining verses that talk about justification by faith alone. Because that was a big contention. Is just is, are we saved by faith? Are we saved by works plus faith? And so orange became my first color in which became uh, became an established color and basically orange stands for justification by faith alone how to get saved but it also kind of expanded a little bit it expanded to passages on mercy and grace and love so orange in your bible is going to represent salvation passages how to get saved but it's also going to represent passages which express the mercies of God and the love of God and commands to love one another and that kind of thing. But primarily, it's justification by faith. This is going to become in real handy when you're talking to cultists, of course, because all cultists, no matter what the variety, don't believe in justification by faith alone. And so orange became the main one that was justification by faith alone. So uh, Romans 5.1 is really good. All of Romans is marked up in orange. Uh, but also other passages will talk about the mercies of God and the love of God. For, for example, uh, 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. And because uh, and loveth God because God is love. So God is love, and that verse is underlined in orange. A lot of the Gospel of John is underlined in orange. A lot of First John is underlined in orange. A lot of um, the Book of Romans is underlined in orange. And you can see the connection between justification by faith alone, uh, and also passages which mention the love of God and the mercies of God. So, orange represents the love and mercies of God. Well, what was the next uh, item on my list? Well, I, uh, I got my life right with the Lord. I went and uh, served a short-term mission in Israel. I went to YWAM. And one of the big topics when I was in YWAM was the whole was the whole you know, uh, Calvinism versus Arminianism, predestination, particularly regarding predestination. And I was, if you need to you know a little bit about my history, I was raised pretty much in a reformed kind of church. Uh, and so the guy that really influenced me in my teenage years um, was a five point Calvinist. And I kind of adopted it, but I toyed with Arminianism for a while, and one day I said, you know what, I'm going to solve this right now, I'm going to read my Bible, and I'm going to take this yellow highlighter, and I am going to underline everywhere where it talks about free will, and everywhere where it talks about the sovereignty of God. Well, guess what? <laughs> guess how many passages talked about free will? None. And guess how many passages talk about the sovereignty of God? 
everywhere. And so yellow represents the sovereignty of God. So Romans 9 is going to be in yellow. But this also expanded to represent the five points of Calvinism with the exception of the first point. We'll talk about that in a moment. With the exception of the first point, this, this represents, yellow is going to represent um, your Calvinistic passages. Now what I do uh, when I underline something in yellow to separate it out is I'll just write next to it, you know, point one or, or not point one, but point two, point three, point four, irresistible grace. And I normally take notes as well. And so uh, yellow represents the sovereignty of God. It's not just explicitly the five points of Calvinism, but it represents the sovereignty of God with particular relationship to point two through five. And what I suggest is that you use this yellow highlighter and then to distinguish between which points you're writing on, just go ahead and write on the side of it uh, which point it is. So you underline it in yellow. That way when you're reading it, you know where it is. And then you can say, okay, point three, um, limited atonement. So this kind of becomes a catch-all for the sovereignty of God and points two through five in the five points of Calvinism. And that's been helpful too. So now we've got orange and we've got yellow. Now let's move on to uh, other things. Well, the other thing that I started to do was I started to uh, talk about, I started to um, get into apologetics. And, of course, dealing with Mormonism, we talked about that one, but there were other issues I wanted to deal with, and that was, for example, Trinity issues. And that's the next one. Trinity issues are, are uh, covered by pink. Hot, hot pink are, are Trinity issues. Um, and so all issues regarding the Trinity, the, the deity of Christ, the fact that there's only one God, the fact that the Father and the Son are not the same person, but only one God, any issue dealing with the Trinity, I use pink. Um, the deity of the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, different things like that. So Acts chapter 5, where it talks about if you've lied to the Holy Spirit, you've lied to God, that's going to be underlined in pink. Isaiah 43.10, hero is, uh, Isaiah 43.10, before me there is no God formed, nor, there is gonna, nor is there going to be a God after me. Uh, I highlight that in pink. Now, when you're dealing with Trinity issues, a couple things are going to happen. Different people, different cult groups attack the Trinity in different ways. And so what I've done is, if it has particular reference to a particular um, cult that I'm dealing with, I will write the name of the cult on the side, or just the initial. So for instance, Mormons believe in more than one God and they're going to become a God. So Isaiah 43.10, I highlight in pink and on the side of it I put M for Mormon. That way I know, okay, that's where Mormonism is. That one. However, um, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that there's only one God, but they don't believe Jesus is God. So when I look at, say, John chapter 20, where Thomas says, my Lord and my God, I underline that in pink, and I'll put, uh, you know, refutation for Jehovah's Witnesses off the side. So you know what particular Trinity issue you're dealing with. Now this used to be... Um, this used to kind of cover all the other aspects of, the, of, of God, but it doesn't anymore. That's part of the newer development that I've made in my system. So pink deals specifically with Trinity and Trinity issues. And if you're tough fighting, you know, um, oneness Pentecostals or you're fighting, uh, tr uh, you're fighting Sibelianism or you're fighting modalism, modalism is Sibelianism, sorry. If you're fighting Sibelianism or Mormonism or whatever it is, what you want to do is you want to put a note off to the side because there are a lot of different issues when in regard to the Trinity. So that's how I deal with that one. Which leads me to kind of a newer development which I want to get through a little bit quickly on this one and that is purple. Uh, purple deals with other aspects of God that aren't covered by the other colors. So for instance, God's holiness, his omnipresence, uh, things like that. So Isaiah chapter 6, you know, you're going to underline that in purple. And so that deals with 
issues regarding the nature of God that are not dealt with, say, by the sovereignty of God or by Trinitarian issues. So this is the other aspects of God that aren't dealt with by other colors. There's that one. All right. Well, there's blue. Now, blue was a special study that I did where I dealt with sin, the effects of sin, the consequences of sin, the results of sin, all that kind of stuff. The wrath of God on sin is dealt with by blue. Now, that's why blue, uh, that's why only the other four points of Calvinism were represented by yellow. Because point one, total depravity, really falls under the blue category. So blue deals with verses on hell, verses on God's wrath, verses on the effects of sin. And again, uh, verses on hell and verses on total depravity are a bit different. They're related. You can see the relationship, but they're not totally identical. And how do you distinguish? Well, you underline it in blue and you put on there point one if you're dealing with total depravity or you put a hell next to it, hell passage, or you put wrath of God next to it and that's how you distinguish. So it catches your eye on the page, you know the general the general idea and you know whether or not you're dealing with a total depravity passage or you're dealing with some other type of passage. You're dealing with the hell or the wrath of God or the consequences of sin, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, uh, Genesis chapter 3 where uh, God pronounces the curse that's this uh, in Genesis chapter 6 the flood where God says I'm angry and he pours out that's again blue will deal with that all right and then there is there is green now green used to be green used to be a miscellaneous because I wanted a miscellaneous color and maybe I should talk about miscellaneous and green together. But what was happening was, is there were some times where I wouldn't have my, uh, my pens, and it was something miscellaneous, and so I wouldn't use green, I would just use black instead. <coughs> Excuse me. And so half the time it was green, and half the time miscellaneous was black. I thought, well, I don't need two miscellaneous. You know, verses that, that are miscellaneous, that don't fall under any other category. And so I've decided to just use black as miscellaneous. You know, a, a verse that doesn't fall, or, fall under any of the other categories and that you're interested in, that has particular relevance to you or particular relevance to a situation, just underline it in black. Make sure it's a black pen, not a blue pen, otherwise you're going to get it confused with wrath and sinfulness. Uh, and so... What do you do? You underline it and you make a note next to it talking about what it's about. But then that way, when you're reading your Bible or when you're in the field and, you know, some Jehovah's Witness you're talking to and you go down and you look and you know exactly where the verse is because you've underlined it. Particularly, maybe you're talking about regarding the soul. You know, Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe that you have an immortal soul, uh, and, uh, an immaterial soul for that matter. So you could use that for that. Just whatever it is you want to use it for that don't fall under the other categories. So I ended up just kind of replacing green as miscellaneous with this. Well, then this leads us to the final color, and that is green. Now, I noticed that one of the things that kind of really captured my attention in the Bible and why I decided to make green its own category is, first of all, I was using a lot under miscellaneous under a particular subject I thought well I'll just use it for that all the time and that was the relationship of the covenants promises kept promises fulfilled uh, typological things in the Old Testament where the places in the New Testament where the New Testament says that's fulfilled it quotes the Old Testament and says it's fulfilled church Israel relationships are dealt with with by green um, Themes that run through covenants are dealt with by green, that kind of thing. And how do you deal with it? Well, again, you're going to underline it, and then you're going to write a little note next to it. And that little note is going to let you know whether or not you're dealing with, um, say, a covenantal issue, or you're dealing with a type and foreshadow issue, or you're dealing with um, 
whatever issues that you might deal with with the co with uh, in regards to how the covenants relate to each other is going to be dealt with with green and you're going to write a note which is going to distinguish it well that's it that's how uh, it developed and that's the basic colors uh, I hope that this is beneficial to you and also if you like it uh, please uh, pass it on you know implement it if you don't like it forget about it if you like some of it but you have other ideas go ahead and and uh, and add to it and, and then get back to me and let me know what you did because I'm interested uh, in further development on these things all right now one thing I, I want to cover finally I forgot actually and that is why you would need you know uh, a highlighter as well well there are occasions when certain theological topics overlap so are we dealing with the sovereignty of God and a Jehovah's Witness issue and a Trinity issue and what I've noticed is that I will underline which one I think is dominant uh, in a particular color. I'll say, okay, so this is dealing with the Trinity issue, but it also has something to do with salvation. And I'll put the highlighter kind of down next to it or around it or something like that. Just so I know that it's dealing with two issues. And that happens a lot of times you might be dealing with more than one issue okay so that was my final statement again hope you enjoyed it hope this is helpful to you um, hope to see people using this marker system a lot of people have already adopted it uh, God bless and have a great day